This is Lesson 325, Exploring Security Frameworks. So last time we did a little bit of poking around in that uh, network topology for the Water Treatment Center. And if you remember, this is the machine you're doing the virtual, uh, you're basically connecting to. But then you can also, can this is like what you log into with PLTW. And then there's these three other servers uh, at the water treatment place. So this is the one that monitors what the pump's doing. This one controls the water pumps. And this is kind of a web interface to see the results. And there were certain ways that traffic had to flow. Like um, the monitor had to get information from the pump PLC and then put web information on this web computer. And then we had some issues where like, well, if traffic's going like between pump PLC and web 01, that wasn't a good thing it's not supposed to do. So there's the IPs we're, and we're doing a little bit more on this. This one's about actually um, doing ethical hacking. So let's pretend this is some ethical hacking is the idea that uh, sometimes companies want to pay you to hack. They want to pay people to see if they can get through their system and find vulnerabilities. So it's ethical because you are doing it with permission. Uh, and they lay this out as kind of a four step process. Reconnaissance, um, scanning, compromise, and remedi remediation. So the first one's about you kind of seeing how they lay out their network infrastructure. So uh, you see this, or you'll do some scanning and we'll show you what's going on. Or like you just kind of like scan the network for basic setup. The next one is you kind of like, you want to scan for some details on what services and stuff are running on each uh, server host. And then the next one is you try to mess things up and compromise. See what vulnerabilities you find. And then you remediate. How do you fix those vulnerabilities? So it's a four step process to being an ethical hacker. And so we're gonna start off with the first one, reconnaissance. So open up your security lab if you haven't already. And mine got on, so sweet. Uh, the first step here, we wanna open Zen Map. So Zen Map is this thing. And it's gonna open up. Probably play this at double speed, you know. We can do that. All right. Uh, as you did in previous scan, use uh, 10 to, so we go 10 to 0, 0 slash 24. And we're going to do ping scan. And we're going to scan. Then it says scan should take less than a minute. So you sit here and wait. Fast forward. Okay, you see this change up here, maybe? Uh, what can we do? We'll pull off academics in between. Oh, is it done? Sweet. Okay. Uh, to view the visual representation, so we, we've got this information. Scan IDs the host and the water treatment facility, but includes other information, MAC addresses and stuff. So, we're going to click the topology tab. It says to do this, and oh, look at that. That's kind of neat. Then we click the controls button, and then it tells us to zoom in. So we can actually zoom in. So it, it's kind of, what it's doing is it's, you know, we had that picture like this one, but it's kind of like, here's the topology, like the local host is what we log into, and then we had all those other computers. And if you remember, there were more servers in the network than just those three from the last lesson. Uh, neat. You can kind of click around like to highlight certain ones and it moves. That's kind of nice. Sweet. Uh, let's see. Whenever you run the scan, the specific nmap command and its results are temporarily saved. Observe the scans command. So there's the temporary save. And then we want to print this and save it on your desktop. So we're going to print and then print to PDF. And then we're going to go to the desktop and we're going to save this as Brophy Ping Scan. And there we go. All right, it's on my desktop right there. Sweet. Observe. Now, what we want to do is we want to go to 10205 and do Quick Scan Plus. And hit Scan. And so we're waiting for that. We're going to play Archidemics. Uh, log in. Account details. Uh, competition's coming up. So 
So where's my default games? Can I wait for that to happen? Multiplication. Ooh, do you hear that? That was kind of loud. I don't know if you do. Sorry if you do. Turn the sound off. All right, Brophy Twitch TV. Let's join this game. Still not ready? All right, one. Easy, now we should kind of watch. Oh, we're done. Hold on. Okay, well, let's see what happens later. I'll leave it over here, you can watch. Um, no, you can't watch. Next thing, so this is all scanned. One or two minutes, scans 100 most common or well-known TCP ports. Scan completes, observe the end path. What does it show? Uh, open ports and stuff. So here's the open ports and sometimes those are bad. So that's vulnerabilities. Let's save this scan. So we're gonna print it to PDF and name it your name, Brophy, pump PCL, I think it's PLC, but Quick scan plus. So that that was the pump. That was like the pump mon not monitor, the one that's actually doing the pumping. Download the save files from the pick scan to your local machine. So here's how you download if you don't remember. You go to this guy and we open up our browser, we go to the G drive, and in the down you just drag them to downloads right here. And as you probably saw that I did this before. I had to reset this. So there, we downloaded. Open your save scan files in your local machine. So let's do this. Um, okay, there's one, and there's the second one. What do we want to see on this? Record what you see in the scan results. So from the ping scan, which one was the ping? Uh, confirm the IP addresses match your topology diagram. So you're looking at the IP addresses. Uh, you'll see the certain ones from the topology from before. This thing, you'll see 10205 and so on in there. Looks like it matches. Uh, recall that some of the addresses are responsible for running the virtual lab. Yeah, like some of that stuff was like PLTW addresses from last time. Uh, the ones that really matter are 05, 06, 07, 08. So 5, 6, 7, 8. I think these other ones might have been PLTW. But I don't remember, something like that. What does the scan provide about the specific host that isn't available on the quick scan? Oh no, that's for quick scan plus. So, oh, from activity 323, I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while. We can look up the teacher guide. See what it says. And we are on step, oh yeah. Here's, here's what I see in the scan files. Reco what does the scan provide that's not available? Here's the answer key. Uh, quick scan plus. Uh, quick scan plus shows the version of the service running on each port, the number of network hops, host name, operating system. Yeah, a lot more information. It's been a while. Uh, record the detailed information required services, okay. Find the essential services for each of these, if any should be accessible from outside the firewall. So for part C, none of these for this should be accessible outside the firewall because only like through that computer you log in should you be able to access those. Uh, so that could be a way to hack and how would unethical hackers use this information from these scans to their advantage? So uh, you, if you're scanning this, you see what's open, I, they can be they can just attack those servers directly so it's one of those vulnerabilities you kind of want to shut down all right next step scanning all right uh, scanning phase so let's go down to step number 10 on target Windows 01 which is this machine that's what we are uh, I'm gonna think I can close this now I hope sure on target, before you start the Nessus user interface, run the following two commands in PowerShell. PowerShell was the blue one. So we're going to do net stop tenable Nessus. Okay, run the following two commands to restart the Nessus service, ensure a clean, free security out process. 
So now we start it again. Net start. Tenable nests. Okay, so reset it basically. Unplug, replug. Windows start button select tenable network security tab. Sweet, that one. And this web client. All right. New to me. Oh, click advanced. Yep. And then click this link because we don't care. All right. We got our username and password admin and password. That's really easy. Those aren't good. You will now scan for known vulnerabilities. Click the new scan. So, new scan right there. Okay. And what am I doing here? Select the advanced scan. And on the basic general tab, enter the following information. So, we're going to go Brophy Advanced Scan. One uh, pump PLC. Oh, now they get the name right. Advanced scan. And the target is going to be 10205. Okay, and then on the report page, override normal verbosity is checked. Report as much information as possible. Yes. Leave the others as is. On the advanced page, okay. Verify the following setting. Enable safe checks, no. Leave others as is. And then click save. Okay. And click save. To run, click the select the checkbox next to your name. Boom. And then near the top right of the page, click more. Click launch and launch again. All right, so it's scanning. Many ports, it might take so while to run. Scan doesn't run or finish in just a few seconds. You may have missed a configuration step. Okay. Uh, sweet. While well, it's running, what's it doing? So it's scanning right now. While your scan is running, click my name to review what's going on. Ooh, this is going to take a long time. That's going to be a lot of academics time. So, what's still going on? What is Nessus? It's a security tool used to scan a system or network for known vulnerabilities. When a vulnerability is reported or discovered anywhere in the world, the engineers at Nessus add it to their program as a plug-in. An example was a buggy version of MySQL for a potential DDoS attack. Denial of service. Uh, using a list of plugins, that's during what a system has known vulnerability. So it's so it's got a bunch of things it knows, just like a tool, like you're running a virus check type thing. So it's searching for known vulnerabilities, just like a virus check would search for known viruses. Okay, that kind of makes sense. So it's a tool you just kind of run. Uh, Nessus report shows system vulnerabilities, the associated plugin and severity. Simple report below shows the machine currently has one critical vulnerability. This is a sample. I'm going to make that a little bigger. Okay, so so this is not what we're doing right now, but um, so some of these are okay, but you got the color coded. The red ones are pretty bad. So we're going to see what we have in this one. We're at 4% right now. Oops, okay. I'm done with that. Uh oh, did I lose track? Uh, okay, has known vulnerability. Again, the tool works both ways. Ethical hackers detect and fix vulnerabilities. For your scan, Nessus is looking to, for open ports in the remote host Pump PLC. So Pump PLC wasn't supposed to have anyone be able to remotely access it, only the pump monitor. The most common type of scan uses TCP handshake. So the three-way communication. Okay. Unit 2, if you remember any of that. Okay. Okay, we talked about that. Okay, we're going through this. You can read this on your own. While it's scanning, oh, we keep going. Research an example of a plugin and the impact on exploit may have in a system. I'll let you do that. Go ahead. Maybe I'll research. Okay. T 
Tenable website. Where is their Nessus Tenable website? Nessus. Does this let me do that? Oh. It doesn't let me just browse. Okay. Okay, fine, I'll do it in here. Just gives me news articles. Okay. Exposed robotic stuff. Uh, Nessus. I, I guess that's it, right? So that was right here. Uh, do not select an ad base or download link. Just search for it, but don't click the wrong link. You might get a virus. Explore our latest research as of this writing. Okay, this looks like them. Research. Okay, so they got a lot of stuff. So they just keep a, a track of a lot of vulnerabilities. Got it. Uh, that many plugins. Well, I oh, okay here. 141 plus vulnerabilities assessed with 141,000 plugins. This at the time of this writing was 137. Okay. So and search for 84215. So we will search for. How do you do that? Navigate to the link lets you search for plugins. Okay. Eight four two one five. Oh, there we go. Describe the plugin and its severity. So I think that'd be one of these ones. I guess it happened. So here's this plugin, Adobe Reader or Adobe Acrobat, and allowed users to execute arbitrary code or cause a denial of service via unspecified vectors and different vulnerability. So uh, the Adobe Reader used for PDFs. Yeah, that's why they always throw those updates out in your computer. You might go home to your home computer. You get like updates on here. JavaScript needs an update or Adobe Reader needs an update. And when they find those vulnerabilities, they patch them. So that's why it's important to keep your computer up to date. All right, so yay, we did that. Is it still running? 99%? Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Fourth place. Let's go. Trey Young, Kiki, and Damik. Right. Let's go. Oh, I think it's done, but hold on. I don't want them to win. Uh, let me just get ahead a little bit. Come back to this later. Boost. Is my boost here? Okay. There we go. All right. That'll win. Back to work. All right. We're done. Uh, there should be a critical vulnerability related to the select the vulnerabilities tab. Okay. Oh, sweet. So we have our results here. So we have two critical vulnerabilities. And it said, hey, the pro FTPD. So it's right there. Save a screenshot of vulnerabilities page and include the first few entries. Um, sure. I'll snip it just in case. I don't know if I need it for reference later, but we'll save this just in case. I don't think you have to. Using a screenshot, review the details of this plug-in. So you can click through here and the details. Uh, where, what is the service and software? So and what ports and protocols are effective, or is the plugin published? Okay, so there's this one. And if we had to, so it was published in 2015. When was it last modified in 2018? Uh, service and software exploited. So uh, it exploits, what does it exploit? Exploit with the meta exploit. Oh, that's what it exploits with. Uh, I'm probably missing this. What does it? Okay, answer guide. Uh, good job, teacher. Knowing what you're doing. Nope. Okay, so here we go. 
The answer to that exploited the service FTP Pro FTPD. What does it say that? Oh, okay, so it exploits this thing. Oh, yeah, it's exploited this thing. And there you have a solution. It said, hey, it exploited FTP Pro FTPD 315. And it said, oh, hey, your solution is upgrade. So they have an update that this server hasn't done that you can do. It's reinstalling this. The recommendation is to reinstall the software, replacing the vulnerable version, specifically just go up to the next one. So that's what you're doing. You're just running some software and says, hey, update your stuff. Okay. Okay, tools such as ZenMap and Nessus perform banner grabbing. What's that? Used to gain information about a computer system network that services running on its open ports. Admin can use this to take inventory of systems. Can use banner grabbing to find network hot that are running versions of hosts. I think that's what it means. That are running versions of applications with known exploits. So uh, the idea is with all this is just you just have old software and you haven't done updates and you got to do updates. Banner scrabbing relies on loose lip systems for information. A fun fact, the United States Office of War Information ran an advertising campaign called Loose Lips Sinks Ships. Yep. So, like, hey, you can't talk about where you are on a ship, otherwise the Germans might find you. Or like, you know, if you maybe murdered your husband and fed him to tigers, you don't talk about that either. Carol Baskin. Moving on. 25, return to the My Scans page using My Scans link on the left. K. Okay. And we're done with that scan. Cool. Okay, we did it. Scan should be complete. Save the Nessus scan. How do I do that? Select the. You know, do this. Well, three different formats. Sure, you have much information. Select the History tab. So on the upper right screen, select Export. Screen it? Okay. Well, what is going on? On the upper right of the screen, select export. Well, how do I do that? Select the history tab. Oh, I got to do that, right? My scan. Oh, there's an error. I don't care. Okay, hold on. This I'm doing the same thing you guys do. Three different formats, sure. Select the history tab and then select checkbox next to your scan. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. Alright, select the checkbox next to my scan. Export HTML. Executive summary and click export. Save to download. Navigate to this. So you can do this show and folder thing. You can navigate. They're going to rename it to Brophy Advanced Scan 1. Ex what does that say? Whoa. I hate when it does this. Executive Summary. Is that what it says? Executive Summary HTML. Okay. Close enough. All right. I just want to drag it to my desktop, too. I don't like it in there. In Nessus, in the upper right-hand corner of the history page, hit Export. And HTML again. And we're going to go Custom. Okay, we're doing it different ways. And then Export. Custom. And then click Export. Okay, well, okay, I guess we gotta rename this to custom. Custom, sure. And then we're gonna do this one more time. Export Nessus. We're gonna do, and it does the raw Nessus. And then we're gonna rename this. 
and then we're going to go change that name to Pant Scan 1 to Raw Nessus. Okay. Okay, so it wants to download these, so I'm actually going to drag them both to my desktop, as I did with the other one. And then we're going to. So on my desktop, these three. We're going to put it in the download it to my local machine. Done. Sweet. Okay, and that's what you should do just in case you lose your spot. Wow, you're giving you help on how to download? I guess if you forgot. Yep, there you go. Copy the three things into this. Save them to the local machine. Close Nessus window on the Nessus report. Close the Nessus window. Does that mean I'm done with all this? Yeah. So, yeah. So, we just did scanning. Cool. And now we're going to do the third one, compromise. The security third phase of ethical hacking is compromise. Launching exploits at the targeted vulnerabilities. See whether genuine exposures in the system. A new type of tool, do a penetration, a security framework. A series of defined processes used to test. All right. So most delicate ethical hacking because you risk doing actual harm. Okay. But, okay. Metasploit. Use a Metasploit framework. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go on. Okay. So I think I should close all these things. And on target Windows 01, that's this. Launch PowerShell. And we're going to do MSFDB. Star, oops, typed it wrong. MSFDB start. And then we should do MSF console. Oops, MSF console. Okay. May take a few minutes rolled. database system is starting up. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to... Oop, second place. Let's try again. There we go. Is this what you guys do when you wait for things? Just alt-tab to something else. Kind of fun. I don't know. Getting ready. Oops. Ooh, almost got me there. You can use the number. I can click a lot faster with numbers, but then you don't see my mouse. Okay, I'm going to do numbers. Oh, let's see. Boom. Oh, jeez. Maybe here. Okay. Well, I'm going to win that. Hopefully this is done. Oh. Did not do the... Ooh. Okay. I did something. All right. All right. I guess we're in. Uh, hold on. Power on my computer. Disconnected. Oh, there. It's back. All right, we're back. So, now that we're in. Sweet. Gotta make sure OBS is working. All right. We are going to type in what it says here, which is search... Pro F T P D using slow search. Oh, it looks like something didn't happen. You know what? We're going to redo all those things again because that felt weird. And I don't like how this got resumed. I think I got to refresh it. Oh, no, that won't matter. Yay. Good thing that we're, that's why we save things. All right. Unit three. Jeez, that's kind of frustrating, right? All right. We have to go back to the lab. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go back to doing this thing again. Oh, are we in quick? Oh, we're in quick. Excellent. So msfdb start 
MSF console. Oh, okay, a few minutes to load. What that means, back to the grind. All right. Wow, they must not like playing me. Okay, we're going to try to get high score right here. All right. I should turn sound on. Oh, jeez. Let's unmute this. Hope it's not too loud. Oh, jeez. That was loud. Okay. Well, I don't want to click it then. Oh, jeez. All right. Got to beat these kids. They're pretty good, though. Use that boost. Uh huh. Jeez, concentrating. Wow. That's why this video is going to be pretty long. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that was pretty good. That guy was pretty fast, though. I don't know if it's going to beat my high scores. No, not even close. I delayed at the start, though. I caught up, though. Oh, sweet. We're done. Oh, looks like it worked better. I think. That looks different now, though. Yeah. Oh, well. Let's see what works. So, I should do... You will pen test the pump VLC host see whether one of the services contains one or more vulnerabilities, and therefore exploitable. The first open port listed... Runs, what's the name of the version of the port? Yeah, this is the thing we wanted to check. So, search pro FTPD. Okay. Might take a few minutes. So, in the search results, while this is going on, or what are we actually doing right here? First open port you, li port you listed runs the FTP service. It's the name and version of the FTP service. That's the thing that was being hacked. Or the vulnerability. So we're going to search in here. Okay, there we go. So it found... Find the version of Pro FTPD that is used by Pump PLC. So which one's used by Pump PLC? That would be 135, right? Maybe that one. I think it's that one. One three five. Hope so. Okay. Yeah, that is. Oh yeah, because that's the next step. Oh look, I paid attention. Exploit Unix. And then I think you hit enter and then you go slash. No, you don't do that. F no, it's gonna be Use exploit Unix. Oh, I probably just keep doing slashes. Pro FTPD underscore mod copy exec. Okay, I think, what did I observe? Prompt changes to exploit. Okay, so we're trying to exploit this now. So, as you pen trust system using vulnerabilities, it's helpful to know that exploit is currently active. All right. You now have an exploit running, so you can begin to penetration test this. Type show options. Show options. So I'm going to go show options. Okay. This will show the options you need to set for this exploit. Okay. So I wonder if I can make this zoom better. Probably hard on the stream to see this. Okay. And is, can I make that bigger at all? Seems kind of small. Oh. Something went... Oh, I see what went weird. Hold on. Okay. Well, I can't really make it bigger. So. We are down to this one. Okay. Now I have an exploit running. Show options for what I can do. Okay, so when you show options, it lists everything on here. Cool. 
set the target remote host in its file path. So we're going to do msf exploit dot 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 set our host 10205 mms um, what oh no we go set our host 10205 and then we go set site path slash var slash triple dubs HTML. Okay. Next, I will launch the exploit. Metasploit has a configuration for vulnerability where you launch the exploit related to it. You're effectively using the vulnerable application. All right. Let's go exploit. And I don't know what it does. Opens, displays the following information. All this. Connected to the server. Sending a copy command server execution payload. From the output, an experienced security expert can see what has happened with this meta exploit. It found the port running the vulnerable FTP servers. It connected the service, delivered some files, so like test files. It used the payload, it gained access to the host, started a shell in it, and is now awaiting your penetration test commands. All right. Not behaved like a normal shell because it's running an exploit with metasploit. It's often referred to as hacked environment. Okay. Learn your identity in the machine. Type, type, who am I? Triple dub data. You're in the hacked environment as the web server user. I think that was from the old command. An ls command will give you the files of web service. So I'm now in there, and I can see the files in there. All right. To discover or verify a host location network, use a command you already know, host name. Okay, pump plc. So it told me I'm in pump plc. Cool. A new command, if config. If config. Utility for ma managing the configuration networks device. Okay. Main configuration is entered. Okay, cool. Verify where the computer's network is. So I did the host name was pump plc. So we go if config f0. Wow. What do you see? All right. I uh, confirmed the host name is pump plc. So we did that before we typed host name pump plc there. And then the IP address is we recognized it as host name is this and I can confirm that IP address is that same one and where is that actually say that inet right here the address is okay so cool well we, that's what we intended to do and we got into that host machine to further confirm access you can cat the file that contains a list of all users pump PLC so we can go cat, etc. password. And that tells us list of all users on pump PLC. All right, there's a lot of users on here. Cool. Awesome. All right, find the sense, uh, list of all users. Finding the sensitive user information confirms you're able to access the system. Yeah. So. Basically, we found a list of all users on here. We definitely got the system. If they don't believe us, we can just tell them that, you know, who's on here. All right, cool. Quit meta exploit. Press Control C. Uh huh. Control C. Uh, did it not? Abort session, yes. Okay. So I did it. Control C again. Exit command. Quit. Yes. Control C. Oh, fine. We're done. All right. Last step, remediation. Here we are. Fourth and last phase. So we, we compromised the system by getting in. And then remediation is is about uh, providing the remedy for the system.
The recommended solution for this vulnerability is to reinstall or upgrade the FTP if you go back to those earlier instructions that said, hey, just do the update. And that's it. However, updating system often takes days or even weeks. You cannot rely on immediate reinstallation. Oh, okay. So it's not just like running on a computer. Instead, you will configure Pump PLC's firewall to offer some temporary relief. So maybe like you, you tell them they have to update the system, but for whatever reason, they can't do it right away. So you can kind of just temporarily prevent the exploit until the update can roll out. So refer to your IP tables commands in your notebook to answer these questions. Join a cyber team. That's me. Uh, I don't know those answers. Not right now. Uh, let's see. I'm going to cheat again. Compromise room. Okay. Here's all the questions. How do you... No, I'm on 41. Yep. Join a server team. And says, refer to the command. How do you designate protocol used by FTP and SSH? How do you FTP support destination? So I got answers right over here. Uh, what type of destination? Those don't look like the same questions, though. Why don't they? Okay, so what is general policy? Sure. How do you designate? How do you establish the source of inbound traffic for each service? There you go. Uh, what's the port destination? Right here. And protocol for FTP? Right there. So those were stuff we did before. That if you had your IPT tables, you would have references for that. From target Windows 01, connect to pump PLC. Okay. Oh, geez. How do you do that again? It's been a long time, right? Yeah. Uh, long break on this does not help. All right. Implement the IPT tables rules to mitigate pro FTP. Exploit. How do I do that? Do I just type those commands in? Oh, that's the stuff from before. Oh, I remember that. Oh. I don't remember those commands. Ugh. Remember we had to do all those steps? Uh, how much farther do I have? Okay, not too much. Rules mitigate the ProFTP exploit. Don't forget to use sudo and to confirm you save your changes. So, if I'm remembering this right, I'm going to go back to the old and defend network attacks. I think it's in this one. Jeez, it's been a long time. Good luck to anyone who's doing this without my help. Okay, so is this where I had to do this? Next, clear the existing rules. We did this. I remember this. Okay, so I'm going to leave this up to you. I think you can, yes. You can just do those steps right there, and that should run it all, right? So, okay, fine. I'll do it, too. I'm not going to be lame. It's only been 40 minutes. In 45 minutes, you're fine. So, I'm going to go to this lesson. Again, we are... I think I do this. So, do I go to sudo IP tables dash f input? Is that what I want? So then I go sudo tables slash a input p tcp double dash d port h slash j attempt. I assume that works. Oh, okay, that's not going to be exactly it. Uh, oh. Hey, here's the directions on what to do right here. Okay, I'm going to cheat. Okay, so you're doing this at home. Here, here's the list. Take a screenshot. All right, I'm going to do this on another thing. So what I do in de instead, IP tables dash F input. Okay, that's what I did. Oh, okay. 
IP wait IP tables dash F input and then we go to oh wait I messed up IP tables dash F input Do you have to do a sudo? Sure. And then sudo dash a input dash m state double dash state established related j accept. Oops, that did it. Yeah, uh, this is pretty weird to do this. You don't get this far and you did everything else. I'm proud of you. Uh, oh, except, uh, oh, I supposed to put that pseudo thing in front? L input. Wait. Oh wait, I wasn't supposed to do sudo for all those. Oh. You know. You can do it yourselves at this point. How do you designate? From the target windows we did. Implement your IPT tables. Verify the remediation works successfully. So I guess you would test it again using meta exploit to prove it doesn't work. Honestly, at this point, um, you're good. So thank you for doing this. I think what you should have learned at the end, if I were to say anything, is we're practicing the ethical hacking thing of the four-step process. So we definitely ID the network using a new tool and scan that network using that tool as well and talk about how to so use that scanning to figure out that one vulnerability, which was the FTP thing, and there's the way to do it was updated because it's version 135. And then we showed how to compromise the system going through a few commands. And then you can remediate it, which was, hey, update the system. But since they can't always update systems right away, uh, we were going to just try to close ports on a firewall. And that got a little weird because I don't remember how to do all the commands. But um, hey, if you got this far, you did pretty good. Thank you for watching.